Let's just start with this Biden proposal uh, that came through on Friday. I thought it was really interesting piecing together the commentary that we've got from various Israeli officials over the weekend. Netanyahu saying a permanent ceasefire is a non-starter. His right-wing coalition partners threatening to leave the government if he agrees to the outline. So it very much feels like if President, if the Prime Minister actually goes along with this plan, he could be putting his own political career at risk. Good morning, Jemana. It's, uh, it's great to be with you. Yes, it's been fascinating to watch the commentary coming out of Israel, or the reactions, rather, coming out of, of Israel, both from the government itself and the various members as you said, the far right members saying that if, Pres if uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu takes this deal, they'll be walking out. But you have, of course, his war cabinet members like Benny Gantz saying that if Prime Minister Netanyahu does not go forward with a vision for the day after in Gaza, he will leave the war cabinet by June 8th. That was a move that preceded President Biden's announcement on, on Friday. And at the same time, you've had massive demonstrations on the streets of Tel Aviv by Israelis saying, take the deal, enough with the war. And take the deal mm -hmm. are the words that President Biden himself used in his announcement on, on Friday. Now, a lot of commentary is also saying that the onus is now on Hamas to accept the deal. That's also also how Americans are putting it, American officials are putting it. But remember, Hamas had already agreed to a deal a few weeks ago, which we think is the same as what President Biden put out, which we also think is the same as mm. Prime Minister Netanyahu put to his war cabinet. Um, whose deal it is in the end doesn't matter. President Biden put this forward. He's putting pressure on both the Israelis and to the extent that he can put pressure on Hamas through the Qataris yeah. to take this deal. A lot of commentary are saying this is the latest plan. I really think it's the last option possible to try to go onto a more positive trajectory. Yeah. Otherwise, we're facing months of war. Well, well, here's what I was going to say uh, to that point. I thought it was really interesting that a joint statement was put out on Friday by U.S., Qatar and Egypt, the three main mediators, urging both sides to accept the terms of the deal. And I just wonder if uh, Israel Netanyahu reject the deal, it, does it mean that the diplomatic avenue has run its course? To a great extent, I think Yes, and that's the danger with President Biden's very sort of high-stake gamble to go above Netanyahu's head and address the Israeli public directly. Because I think that the most important sentence in President Biden's address was, um, I ask you to take a step back and consider this moment, he said, addressing the um, Israelis. Um, this is a deal that allows the uh, uh, reintegration or the integration of Israel into the region in the long term. This is a different path than war, war until victory, which your prime minister is putting forward. Now, if Prime Minister Netanyahu takes the deal, his far right ministers will indeed step down and potentially bring down the government. But there is an option, a possibility looming on the horizon, that he could put together another broad-based coalition that would include the, the Minister of Defense, Yoav Galant, Benny Gantz, and others who want mm. to support this deal. And so it becomes about the math that you have to do in the Knesset to change the 65-person coalition that he has into a different one, which would allow him to, to form a new government. Uh, Kim, just a uh, you know, final question to wrap things up here. I think uh, there was a moment a, a couple of weeks ago when people thought that maybe the U.S. would think of, of that so-called red line after the attacks on the Rafah encampment uh, and potentially think about pausing the shipment of military equipment. And post-Rafah, the White House were quick to say that they did not deem that the red line had been crossed. To what extent do you think the U.S. are weighing up here the possibility of actually pausing the, the distribution of shipments in order to get this ceasefire across the line? 
President Biden has tried to walk this very fine line between um, saying that Israel has the right to defend itself, that they will never abandon it, but at the same time trying to signal that, you know, there are some limits. But listen, I mean, since the beginning of the year, the Americans have been saying, you know, the, the Israelis are going to wrap up operations by the end of January, February. This campaign will stop after this. This campaign will stop after that. And clearly, the pressure that they've try to put to bear on Netanyahu has not delivered. The bear hug that President Biden gave Benjamin Netanyahu after the events of October 7th did not, did not uh, lead to the results that President Biden was hoping for. Now, mm. indeed, you know, he could have put a lot more pressure on Netanyahu. He has chosen not to. And that's why I think it's interesting that what he's done now is deploy the capital, the other part of the capital that he gained when he traveled to Israel after uh, in October, which is to de to deploy the yeah. capital that he gained with the Israeli public and appeal directly to them to take this deal and put pressure on this on their government to take this deal.